and today I just finished reading Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. This is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles series, and though it does follow Cinder's story, we pick up with a girl named Scarlet, who is, in a sense, Little Red Riding Hood. I give this book 4 out of 5 stars, and this series is definitely worth continuing. Now I'm going to be getting into the spoilery section, so if you have not read Cinder or Scarlet, go read them and then come back. Bye! So I wrote down my current thoughts during the beginning couple of chapters of Scarlet in my journal so that I would be able to go back and look at them. And so I kind of wrote them down by the characters. First is Wolf. He's I believed that he was going to be a very interesting character, and so I wrote down, is he a bad guy who turns into a good guy, a good guy being used by the bad guys, a plain old bad guy, and love interest question mark. Turns out he was a good guy being used by the bad guys. He is a lunar who has been genetically modified to have be part wolf, which, can you believe that? Moon, lunar, wolf werewolf, all that, just so cliche, but it works so well. And he is the love interest, and I was really interested to see how that would tie in, and she did a phenomenal job. Then Grandmere is holding a secret. Plus, she is kicking butt in the military when she was younger, and she was a military spaceship flyer who returned, um who retired to a farm, which is epic. Also, we find out that she was the one who was hiding Cinder during her surgery to become the lunar robot, hide her memories so that she doesn't know that she's the lunar princess. I mean, that is awesome! And so she's, there's definitely, a, that was definitely a secret worth hiding, which is why the wolf pack is going after her. And then Scarlet just wants a simple life. She was abandoned by her father, who was a drunk, and her mother, we think, is dead? Um, and she has red hair, which I spelled red. R-E-A-D. Wow, man. And she is sometimes known... She has red hair, which is where she gets the nickname Scarlet, and she's sometimes called Scar, which really confused me at the beginning because when I hear Scar, I think of Scar the Lion from Lion King because I'm such a Disney fanatic, and so that threw me off for like half the book. And she is willing to do anything to get her grandma back, and she's so innocent and naive and just so sweet, and I love that she's not quick to judge which made it perfect for when she actually ended up meeting Cinder. And I was not sure of what this whole book had to do with Cinder because we didn't see her until much later in the book. And I was kind of like, okay, I kind of want to see Cinder because we just left her there. But then we just saw this, uh, then we saw just a couple snippets of Kai and then there was this other guy sitting in a cell, and there was this girl escaping, and I wasn't quite sure if it was Cinder. It was Cinder. Captain Thorn is a bit eccentric, but he is very funny, and his banter with Cinder is some of the best comic relief in a book with such a um, serious political tone for a dystopian novel. The transition between the fairy tales of Cinderella and Red Riding Hood and tying them together was really rough at the beginning and it was very hard to follow at first because we didn't pick up with Cinder right away we started with this girl Scarlet who we knew absolutely nothing about and we didn't know how she was gonna tie in but that was also part of its charm was that we knew that it was part of the Lunar Chronicles so we knew it was gonna tie in somehow so we just had to keep reading to figure out how it was gonna tie in the Lunars we get to learn a little bit more about their glamouring and apparently on the moon, on Luna, they have these mirrors or win they have these windows that won't show reflection, which is really cool. Queen Lavana has this ring after Prince Kai and her get engaged, and I'm wondering, where is that 
from. I want to read Ferris, but I want to read it after Crest, and I'm sure Ferris will explain it, but I'm not sure. I want to know, was she brokenhearted at first? But there, did she find this love interest that is torn away from her? Is that what's going on? And then, I already talked about the wolves. Is Scarlet part lunar? She, it isn't really explained, but we know that her grandma was pregnant after she got back from Luna, so her, uh, her dad might be part lunar, and we don't know really anything about her mom, but, so could she be like a quarter lunar, so could she have some faint lunar ability that we don't know about yet? I'm really interested to figure this out. Also, what is Lavana's obsession with the Commonwealth. It's not the only per- they mentioned even even before. It's not the only place that has someone who she can marry into the world. Is it specifically the Commonwealth that she's after? But we kind of know that she wants to take over the whole world. But we see a glimpse of her other side where she just wants to be loved. And is Prince Kai just that hot that she- that's the one that she wants to marry even though she's probably gonna kill him afterwards? Um, so couldn't she get her foothold somewhere else on Earth? Maybe somewhere a little less weak and defiant than the Commonwealth? These are all questions and concepts that I really hope was answered in Cress and Winter and Ferris that I cannot wait to finish reading this month, so I really hope they get answered soon. But unfortunately, that is it for this video. Click that subscribe button of perpetual happiness and give me a big thumbs up. Let me know where you would want to live in the world of the Lunar Chronicles. Luna, the farm that Scarlet's from, the Commonwealth, Paris, where would you want to live? Let me know down in the comments below.